So Isla Mirada is a special place. You got tremendous fishing here, both offshore and inshore. It's not like a big city. You know, as a kid growing up, if you weren't on the water, I mean, there wasn't much else to do. So what am I gonna do to be different? You know, how am I gonna do this and succeed? I mean, I wasn't out there chasing it. You know, people didn't necessarily know me or my name. When I was a kid growing up, you know, I fished with my uncle all the time, with my dad. My dad, you know, he videotaped so much as a kid. I wanted to have a fishing TV show, you know, 20, 30, 25 years ago, whatever it was. Every single weekend, there were all those kids on the boat together, growing up. You know, you've heard of the little rascals. We were, this was Bud and Mary's little dock rats. This is the Bahamian Outdoor Show. We're here with Nick Stanzik, I'm your host, Ben Browning, and Mikey Mason, and Taylor Walsh. Okay, it's the Nick Outdoor Show. I'm traveling on. I'm traveling on. I'm Struck out with the same. You missed some fish? We got a blue marlin on with Mikey Mason. We'll get back to you right after these messages. In high school, I had a friend named Nick Blitz. We started a thing called the Nick Outdoor Show, and we'd make some fishing shows, do a little bit of cooking. And then when he passed away, you know, I guess part of me kind of died on the inside. Just not doing it, I didn't feel like I could. But now to go fishing, document it, put a video up, you know, have potentially hundreds of thousands of people watch it, come in from fishing, and there's 20 or 30 people there standing saying, oh, we watch your show and we love it. Like, it's a really cool feeling, and no doubt in my mind, he's part of my motivation. We've had Bud and Mary's Marina since the late 70s and 78, and it was around since 1945, so it's been an establishment here for a long time. And a lot of people make a living there, a lot of captains, a lot of mates. I watched a lot of kids grow up there the last 15 to 20 years, and I was one of those kids not too long ago, it seems like. Bud and Mary's is a world-famous sport fishing marina located in Isla Mirada in the heart of the beautiful Florida Keys. I see you dancing, Rosalina, Lina. I'm at your window tonight. Girl, till you're down, you need you, need you. I don't care if it's all right. Hey there, Mr. Mr. Warren. Meet your sister looking out for a good time. There's a few reasons why I love swordfish, you know. There are the ultimate fish in my mind. There was no other fish you could go out here and target off Alamorada that you could catch a 30 or 40 pounder one drop and the next drop you might hook a three or, three or 400 pound fish. Come on, baby! Oh my God. Yeah! Woo. Yeah, boys! Woo. Yeah. Until you've seen a broadbill swordfish in the daytime lit up electric blue. I don't know how to explain it other than for me it's almost a spiritual experience. And you know, as a, a fisherman, a lifelong fisherman, which fishing is in my DNA, it's in my blood, it's an obsession. But the greatest fish of them all, all, will always be a broadbill swordfish. My dad started catching with my uncle and 2003 in the daytime. We caught some at nighttime before that, but really when the daytime fishing kicked off, that's when my obsession with them began. 
All the big ones got away in the beginning. I mean, we lost so many big giant ones. You know, they almost seemed impossible to catch. Something about them, when they'd come up, the colors, the blue, the silver, they would jump, they'd throw the hooks, they'd get away. And I think what really helped us, you know, was learning what not to do, you know, losing some of these big fish. That's what really, I felt like, made us better fishermen. You know, one day, you know, we just started getting better at it and better at it, and just started catching more numbers of them. We catch this 750 pound swordfish here, 757 pounds. And, you know, it was an eight hour battle. I, I didn't know if we were gonna catch him, to be honest with you. If you looked how many years, how much time we spent chasing that fish, you know, that's what kept us coming back, you know, was losing all those big ones all those years. And we caught some nice ones, but we always knew there was a bigger one out there. And, and one day we finally caught him. And I sleep a little bit easier at night. We fed a lot of people. We'll take that one to their grave with us. And it's hard to be good at everything. One thing I am good at is catching swordfish. Desperate times call us for desperate measures. We got one Chiquita left. If someone has a passion for fishing, no matter what type of fish it is, they want to do it and want to catch it. And that's what I had as a kid and a lot of my family and friends had. You know, I hope my daughter takes the same liking to fishing that I had as a kid growing up and we have another daughter on the way and with a little bit of luck they'll both love to fish and I'll grow up fishing with them just like I did with my dad and my uncle. You know whether or not my you know, YouTube channel was successful, you know people watching go fishing around, I could document my whole life with my family and when I'm gone maybe my daughter you know and hopefully I'll have two daughters here soon they can look and say oh yeah look at that when I was a little kid and get to see these trips we went on and things we did and there's something you know to enjoy the memories of. Nick, this is the real deal. I've been really blessed. Parents want their children to uh, follow in their footsteps, so to speak. But it's a funny thing about fishing. It has to be in your blood. Uh, my two young men, Nicholas and Ricky, both love to fish. And they both want to be here and they want to continue this legacy of Bud and Mary's. It was my privilege to have uh, been at the helm, so to speak you know, for these last 42 years, and an even greater privilege to pass this legacy on to my two children, who will keep it going because they have that passion and that love. It is in their blood. When I think of legacy, I, I, I do think of uh, past, present, and future. And now, of course, having, uh, well, three and one on the way grandchildren, it would just be my hopes and uh, dreams that, uh, you know, that this thing, uh, you know, will still, uh, will still be here for them.